So we are rolling. This is Randy. I'm here with Rick and Josh, and uh, actually Joe. Er, no, no, I'm sorry, Josh. You changed. Yes, I changed. Bye. I'm sorry. I changed. Uh, that would be Joe. Jo Josh is actually on the inside, enjoying J Death You've been Angel. Show how many years are, and don't know who the people are. Uh, I'm, I'm a little. This is my second show this week, so I'm a little scrambled in the head. Yeah. But uh, yeah, CLC uh, just kicked ass, and uh, this is Carl. Well, yeah. To be fair, technically, it's. Not corrosion conformity proper. But, concur conform but, no, but, but, but corrosion. corrosion of conformity blind. Well, the reason we make that delineation or whatever is not because um, it, it's just a matter of respectfully showing the fans mm -hmm. what we're out to do. And yes. What this, what we did tonight, is a part of a, a legacy special event, for lack of a better description, to bring an album that was part of a great legacy. Mm -hmm. So you see a, a very uh, pivotal. If they don't, if I can say that correctly, uh, moment in the band's uh, career, so to speak, uh, where, where, you know, um, a lot of people all of a sudden took notice of a band that had been amazing to begin with. It was, has constantly been going through an evolution. Yeah. Uh, evidenced by all the various singers and albums and, 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 and sonic approaches, you know. Yeah. But it's all still well, part of a great thing that started back in 1982. Yeah. And it's still going today, it's in 2015. Yeah. You know, think about that. and. What that means, you know, that's that's longer than a lot of like really classic, big, famous bands. You know, this is an underground thing that that grew, evolved, a bunch of hardcore punk rock guys that embraced uh, metal and created this hybrid crossover thing. Part of that whole thing. And so I'm so proud to be part of that legacy and the COC thing that we're doing, the blind thing, is just a cool uh, four-year moment for me in that. And uh, we've made something really cool happen. It was the Blind record. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how important that record was for a lot of people after the fact. You know, I have come across this tonight here in Rochester. Great show. And, you know, I've been approached by people that said it was uh, an album that changed their lives, that, that uh, they still, you know, consider one of the, their favorite records of all time. And that blows me away. I mean, you know, incredible. I'm just a working guy, you know what I mean? I, You know, music hasn't always paid my bills, you know, and for me to come out here and do that and have people say that to me, I, I can't imagine how that feels. So can't how did imagine. this all come to fruition? Well, we, we, Reed and I, um, you know, um, came together many years ago and talked about doing it. And first, initially, when a friend of ours died um, in Confessor, and uh, great band, and we came together and did a benefit with some members of Leadfoot, that was my band after I left COC, and Reed, and we came out and did, did part of the Blind album and tried to help this, our friend's widow pay some of the, you know, bills and all that stuff. And all of a sudden we realized, hey, you know, people really, it was completely sold out. Show at the Lincoln Theater in Raleigh. And, and, we realized, wow, people actually want to hear this. So we've, we've tried it. We tried a couple times. The first time in 2009, and then again, I believe it was uh, 2011. And it just uh, we did several shows, but at the time it was never just right to go out and take it on the road for real. You know, we did some regional stuff down in down south, North Carolina, South Carolina, that kind of stuff. And um, this time around, it's just it's just clicking and working. And we had a window. Uh, He'd done the COC three piece with Woody and uh, Mike. Yeah. Uh, two albums that they did. Came back together and did that. Uh, and uh, then Pepper has re entered the, the fray. Yeah. And they went to Europe just recently and came back from that. And there was a window where Woody's having a second child and needed a month or two off to have, have his kid, you know, be born and be there for the birth and everything. And, um, Reed and I decided, hey, this would be a great time. Reed was like, hey, let's go out and do this. And we got we got hooked up with the Cavalier Conspiracy Death Angel Tour, and we couldn't be happier. Holy well, shit, here we are. It's just about uh, a little over a weekend with uh, about two and a half, three weeks left. And Rochester was added last minute, you know? Yeah, it was very There's, sudden. I saw the no, event no, we, page, we, we, and I'm we, like, whoa. We were so uh, humbled by the response of people showing up and Pack in the club like this, we had no idea. We were a little bit worried, you know. It's not fair sometimes to throw it on people last night. They don't know. Everyone's got lives to live, and here they are coming out and sharing their night with us. So 
Plus, you know, having a Saturday night off on tour is kind of stupid, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Saturday so, night was nothing to do. You nothing know. to do. Hey, watch the same show over and over again. But um, no, it's great, and we we are so fucking stoked, man, to do this. And we hope we can do it again. You know, I don't take any of it for granted. I hope we can go out and shit do it in South America, Europe. You know. I got connections to uh, guys who want to book us in Beirut, Egypt, nice. Turkey, Cyprus, and I would do it in a heartbeat. I really would. You know, you know why? Because there's awesome metal and hardcore fans all over this planet, man. And that's like an amazing thing that unites so many people is uh, fucking metal, man. The best fans in the world. When are you going to start doing School of Violence songs? <laughs> you know, I signed two School of Violence uh, records the other day in Amityville. Played. He almost bought one before we came out here tonight. He's like, I, I, I should I'm get this. Quite proud of that album. <laughs> it was, no, I, it was why cool. Why is it not on CD? It is, you know why? I don't know. It does ask ask Brian Slagle. Yeah. Death metal. Yeah, death metal blade, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still. You know, th those guys are out there. You can ask him. I guess you know it would be a specialty issue. I'm very f uh, proud of that. I'm friends with the guy, the guys. Uh, Stegman. Steg Stegman Heinz and. Uh, no, I've, I've the glory of Facebook. I've reunited with him online. He's out in California, building uh, choppers and stuff. He's really happy doing that. Power to him. That's shit. I'll do that. I did a reunion uh, two years ago with my first band out of Connecticut, Seizure, my hardcore band. Mm. With a 25 year reunion. That was pretty damn awesome. Nice. So I was in the Connecticut hardcore scene, uh, Southern Connecticut, the, the Anthrax Gallery. The, the, we had every great band coming through. We were really close with the New York and the uh, Jersey hardcore scenes. And that's where I first saw COC in 1984 with a band called Butt Meat opening up for Butt Meat? Butt Meat. And then, uh, and then after that, in 1985, Seizure opened up for COC in Springfield, Massachusetts. And I kept seeing those guys playing, coming through Connecticut and New York and that area. And um, that is, you know, a little friendship going with them or whatever and then I heard that they were you know I was in school of violence then I left school of violence and all of a sudden I heard that they were looking for a singer and I uh, we had some mutual friends and in fact they had an ad in the village voice in New York that said looking for a cross between HR Ian Gillen and uh, Alice Cooper it was one of them another one was HR James Hetfield they had two different ads that Reed put out and I saw that I was like really well, shit, I better give him a call. That's uh, totally my, up my alley. So uh, I went and got the gig, man. It was, it was like May of 89, and I was totally, it was awesome. You nice. Know, yeah. Now, what about this band? Oh, yes. King, yes. King Hitter. King Hitter. King ah, Hitter. yes. Yeah, that, that is. Um, How many people in COC Blind are in this? Three. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for asking. I thought you'd never ask, sir. Uh, no, it, it, it uh, is uh, three of us, obviously. Scott Little, who is on uh, stage left. Uh, I've been playing with him for 16 years. He's been playing, he played on the uh, second and third Leadfoot albums. There's only three out there, if anybody's heard of Leadfoot. Uh, and uh, then our buddy, um, Mike Brown, who had been in bands uh, with him before me. And we were just, uh, <clears throat> Scott and I have been talking, we've been doing Lightfoot for a long time and reached a point where things weren't really clicking, a lot of lineup changes. It's not officially dead, we reserve the right to bring it back anytime, you know. But um, thanks, brother. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so it just, we, weren't really, we haven't been busy at all and we wanted to get together and play some um, heavier stuff. And. We had mutual friends in different bands, and uh, this band that was signed to Sony for about 10 seconds, like everybody else was, uh, called Sex, Love, and Money out of Greenville, North Carolina. A really very good band, and the drummer, um, uh, John Chambliss, and the bassist Chuck Manning, have been playing together for you know for 20 years, like some of the rest of us. And uh, they came available, and it was like this instant killer, you know, rhythm package that showed up as a team, you know. And we knew them from back in the day, and, and Scott and Mike have been playing together forever. And I don't want, I mean, I don't want, it's, it, the details are kind of not that exciting, but we got to, we were getting together just on the weekends to try it out, and all of a sudden it was clicking, and everybody in the band writes music, including John, the drummer. You know, people are 
So it's, it's a very communal, cool thing. And all of a sudden we had five songs. We were just gonna go demo like one or two and we had more than we expected. We tracked five and said, you know what, let's see if somebody wants to put this out. Well, we were proud of this stuff. And here you have the King Heater EP. And we have over half the next album written. We should, we're continuing to write and should be in the studio hopefully the uh, fall, winter of uh, this year, 2015, and have it out in 2016. Really, really cool. Available on Candlelight Records? Um, well, yeah, it's technically Paula Hogan, Candlelight USA, has put it out under her other um, imprint, uh, Restricted Release. She also has Manic Music, Plastic Head, a couple imprints. Uh, she's a one-woman army. She's amazing. She's done so much for us. Um, incredible, incredible person and uh, we're really proud to be a part of her team. And she's got us out there, and a lot of people responding and giving us a really good feedback on this EP, so we're psyched. And as a matter of fact, we're out with Cavalier Conspiracy and Death Angel on the store in Lodi Kong, and Reed is pulling off to do a CFC four-piece show at a beer festival, Dark Lord Beer Festival in Munster, Indiana, and we happen to be playing in Joliet on a Friday night and Milwaukee on a Saturday night and he has to pull off. So we're flying the bassist and the drummer out. King Hitter's gonna fill in for COC Blind those two nights oh, nice. on this tour. So that's pretty fucking radical. And, yeah, that's cool. You know, that's like a great way to field test it on a big tour out in the middle of, you know, yeah. in, the, in the heart of this country. And we're so excited about it. So, and, and then hopefully we'll be starting to pick up dates, uh, you know, come the summer and fall and do some regional touring and expand. No. It's a five song EP, so it's, we're lucky to be getting this much attention and positive uh, feedback. We want to take it out worldwide, obviously, but uh, you know, we're going to walk before we can run, you know, so we'll see, we'll see if people are picking it up. What do you, uh, how's the response been to the, uh, to the vinyl of Blind being reissued? It's been good. You know, Prosthetic put it out. I was really shocked and amazed uh, that I was like, wow, 23 years later, this vinyl's coming out? No, no, it's it's great. I'm, but, you know, you're just like, wow, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. You know, very cool that it's come out. And uh, though I would like a copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think you've earned one. <laughs> I, you know, if somebody wants to buy me one, they're not giving us any. <laughs> me and Reader were told we have to buy one. <laughs> you have to buy your own oh, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Love Bastards. It. Anyways. Um, take up a collection. We should do a, a GoFundMe for There you uh, go. For uh, <laughs> Carly, group. Carly Gale and Reed Mullen, buy us our own vinyl uh, funds. <laughs> Prosthetic records, bastards. Anyway, no. I'm very happy that they've done that. I'm just kidding. I'm really excited. Um, we had a, uh, it was cool to get that phone call to do a interview for the liner notes. And uh, holy shit, couldn't have been better times for me because, you know, it's, not, it's a lot of people say, hey, what's he been doing all this? time, these wasted years. I was like, well, you know,